Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm ZS Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at RSA 2024 inside the Moscone Center in San Francisco. I'm joined today by Mark Terenzoni, or the Director of Risk Management at AWS. I think this is the uh, first time you've been on ZCast with me, so for my audience, can you just get a quick bio on yourself, who you are, and what you do at Amazon? Absolutely. Well, first, thanks, thanks, yeah. Zeus, and uh, uh, my name is Mark Terenzoni. I, I run several of our customer-facing security services, helping customers protect their estate while they run their workloads on AWS. Uh, I'm focused on incident investigation response, so I have Amazon Detective and Amazon Security Link. Okay, and uh, that's a big job. The, the, as, being responsible for risk management, and that's more customer facing than internal facing, correct? Yeah, it's customer facing, yeah. and it's really focused on helping customers reduce their risks and attack security issues before they become big issues. Okay, and uh, uh, we're here at day two. We had uh, some keynotes yesterday, a bunch of news came out today. Uh, what, what are some of the key themes here that you're seeing? Any news catch your eye? And I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to say for one of them. <laughs> yeah, AI would uh, it'd be shocking if I didn't talk about AI. Yep. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, it's starting to really explode and, and develop customer use cases uh, that help them with their user experience and help them protect their states as well. Yeah, and so when I think about the intersection of AI and security, uh, I've talked to a lot of customers. One of the things I like about talking to the Amazonians, as you guys talk to a lot of customers that run the gamut from small companies that are risk adverse to the biggest companies that are, you know, very uh, forward looking. When it comes to AI and security, what are where are customers' heads there? Are they excited about it? Or are they cautious? I think optimistic? mostly excited. I yeah. think they, they they see an opportunity to enhance their experiences they deliver to their customers, but they're also being cautious. Uh, and they're you know it's it's a fairly new technology, so they want to make sure that they can run their AI in a controlled environment, and that's where we can help. And we've got a lot of folks on our team helping customers navigate what the right models are what the right guardrails that they need to put in place, and uh, you know how that would translate into applications that they deliver to their customers. Okay, and uh, I saw uh, this week also Amazon pushed a blog out saying it was the one year anniversary of the AWS Security Lake, or the Amazon Security Lake. And uh, so for those who aren't familiar with that service, can you talk about what it is and uh, sure. how customers use it? Yeah, so Security Lake was launched a year ago. Uh, there's two components to it. Um, one is the lake itself, but I'm gonna start with what schema that we helped develop with industry, because it's an important piece of this. So we worked with uh, all the top security um, companies and co-developed an open source security schema called OCSF, or Open Cyber Security Schema Framework. And it currently has about 700 participants, all open source. The community is developing the schema. And why this is important is because security logs and security data comes from multiple places. And having a common language for customers to run their analytic applications on really just reduces the cycle time to getting the best results and, and outcomes that they look for. And what's customer feedback been like on the product? It's been, it's been super positive and li largely because we have a huge ecosystem around it. So it's Security Lake is built for customers to bring all of their security data in a democratized fashion, but stored in their own S3 buckets. So they have control of it. What we do with Security Lake is we make it efficient to query and analyze that data. And then the industry has built a number of solutions on top oh. that help drive customers' outcomes. So it's really a community effort. And can you give some examples of what those are? Yeah, um, so we have many uh, what I would call a SIM or XDR partners that have built integrations on top of Security Lake where they're actually querying the data at rest. So the old world would be they would have to bring all that data into their solution. In many cases, the highly voluminous data doesn't need to be accessed that regularly. And now they can actually access that data and open up their aperture and have more data that they have visibility into. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, more and more, in fact, uh, some of the conversations I've had here with the uh, CISOs is that security is becoming more of a data problem than anything else. 100%. And, and uh, there's an expression in data sciences, I think I might have heard this uh, the first time I, for the first time from somebody from Amazon, is that good data leads to good insights, silos of data lead to fragmented insights. And what most companies have with security are a bunch of different silos. And so if you're trying to do XDR or SOAR and your data sits incomplete, then you're going to get fragment 
that insects, correct? Absolutely, yeah. and, and we're focused on bringing that all together for customers so they can get the best outcomes and insights. And I think we talked a little bit about yeah. AI, so I wanna tie that into this because there's another argument that says you can have the best model in the world, but if you don't have a lot of data to train it on, you're not gonna get as good of results. Correct. And now having all this data centralized in one place, these AI worst use cases that are developed on top of it uh, produce better outcomes for our customers. Okay, Mark, so uh, the blog that got pushed out on Security Lake, it, it talked about a number of updates. So can you talk about what those are and how they help customers? Yeah, we've added new sources natively in uh, that are generated uh, within AWS, uh, EKS audit logs being a namely one for our customers. And we also added uh, version 1.1 support, which is a new schema version of the OCSF. And we added uh, the storage of the data in iceberg tables, which helps uh, helps customers retrieve the data more efficiently and effectively. Okay. And um, uh, and so you talked about the uh, XGR use case. Uh, what are some of the other ways customers are using or at least thinking about using that? Yeah, I, I think it's all AI for sure. Um, and you know what I've seen for a lot of customers is their analysts know how to ask really good security yeah. questions, but they are not, in many cases, good SQL you know, query developers. So when you have a lot of data in into this lake and it's normalized, they, they can start asking questions like, tell me the top five vulnerabilities on my production application that have been exploited in the wild. That's a very easy natural language question and our models will get converted into a, you know, m multiple SQL queries underneath that efficiently bring the re and retrieve the data back. So yeah. that's a, an efficiency gain our customers get and and more um, more information about the data that's stored in the lake. And one of the things I've noticed about uh, uh, Amazon over the last uh, uh, several years is that there's been a better tie-in between Amazon products, right? The, all the different services. And so if you think of the one plus one equals three, are there certain uh, uh, other services that customers are leveraging when they use Security Lake? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think you know Athena becomes one, Open Search becomes one, SageMaker, okay. Titan analytic models. We see all of those, as well as our own security services that feed into it. So, you know, Guard Duty produces produces findings. They go into Security Hub. They get aggregated with all other findings, and that stream of findings finds its way into Security Lake as well. All right. And uh, so, just one last question. So, uh, you know, given the type of work you do with customers, uh, for any CISO out there, or security practitioner, looking to modernize their security. Uh, just a couple of pieces of advice you'd give them. Well, uh, first of all, I would say find who your partners are and make sure that they integrate well together. You know, what I hear a lot from customers is yeah, that I hear they, that coming up a lot. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they have a lot of solutions, but they have gaps because they're not tied in together. So one of the things that OCS helps with is helps bring those, those uh, solutions, regardless who they're from, into one place and one together. Don't you know, second one I would say is data is going to be even more important in the future. So figure out a way to make sure that you're capturing all the relevant data about your workloads that you need to protect yourself in the, in the future. And then a uh, third one is, you know, embrace the shift left as well, because if you can stop things at the development cycle level, it's going to be far less things you have to worry about downstream. Okay, so insist on open so they integrate. Yeah. Uh, get your data house in order and shift left. You got it. Get that right. Anything yeah. else you want to add? No, that's it. Um, enjoy the show, and yeah. I'm sure we'll see each other again. All right, thanks, Thank Mark. I appreciate you having you on. And so on behalf of Mark Terenzoni from AWS, I'm Zia Scaravalle from ZK Research saying thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.